It's hard to believe that this beautiful white flower comes from a plant which carries a serious health warning. I'm John Robertson, the former poison garden warden at the Annick Garden, and this is the story of Heraclium mantigasianum, the giant hogweed. Normally when I talk about plants, I tend to stick to the botanical name. You can be sure which plant you're referring to then. But in this case I make an exception. Not just because Heraclium mantigasianum is quite a lot to get your tongue round, but also because giant hogweed, its common name, conveys its true essence. Giant. It is a huge plant. Left to itself it will grow five to six metres high. That was why the Victorians brought it here from Russia. They thought it would make a lovely architectural plant in a large garden but they didn't understand about the plant. It has substances in it which they call sorolins, and if they get onto your skin, they change your skin and make it sensitive to UV light. So if you have contact with the plant and you get the sorolins onto your skin, after about 24 hours, you will start to burn. Now, depending on how much contact you've had with the plant and how much of the juice you've got on you, you may just get little red spots. You may get blisters. You may get burns that need hospital treatment. And the important thing is that the skin stays sensitive to UV light for two to three years afterwards. So if you don't keep covered up, you will burn again and again and again. And when I worked at the Annick Garden, we had numerous visitors who were able to confirm that that was their experience. Having had contact with giant hogweed and come out in burns, they realised they had to cover up. But a year or two later, when they forgot, they left their skin uncovered and they burned all over again. Like a lot of imported plants, it thrived. It left its enemies behind and it tended to take over from the native plants. It will completely colonise a riverbank because it likes the damp. And as a result of that and as a result of the harm it causes, there's been determined efforts to try and eradicate it. But it's not easy to eradicate. Each plant is capable of producing 50,000 seeds and those seeds remain viable for seven years. If you're going to try and remove it, you need at least a seven year program to do so. The plant you're looking at was on the banks of the River Till in July 2008. The River Till is a tributary of the River Tweed. And on the Tweed River and its tributaries, there's been a long program of trying to eradicate the giant hogweed. There was evidence of recent spraying of small plants, but this is one that had escaped attention and succeeded in producing flowering. If it had continued and produced seed, those seeds would have restarted another seven year cycle of giant hogweed on the River Tweed. It really is one of the nastiest plants in the entire plant kingdom, partly because it has no redeeming features. In Iran, some people use the seeds as a spice, they call it Golpar, but other than that, it has absolutely no use. It is purely a problem. We've benefited a lot from plants that people have brought to this country from overseas, but it hasn't all been benefits. And the giant hogweed is a good example that not all things that are brought here are useful. I'm John Robertson, and you can get more information on poison plants at thepoisongarden.co.uk.